Does anyone have a calculator? It's getting harder and harder to keep track of all of the unusual and suspicious deaths of people unlucky enough to be part of Bill and Hillary Clinton's inner circle. Houston, Texas trial lawyer and Democrat megadonor Steve Mostyn died on Thursday in what authorities are saying was a suicide, according to the Houston Chronicle. Mr. Mostyn was only 46, he left behind a wife and several children and earlier this year had announced that he was going to be stepping away from politics to spend more time with his family. Details about how Mr. Mostyn allegedly committed suicide are slim. However, his family said that it happened after he suddenly became afflicted with some sort of mental illness then took his own life, although they weren't clear as to what type of mental illness he suffered from. But it is worth noting that Mr. Mostyn had never suffered from mental illness in the past, according to his family further raising suspicions over the manner in which he died. Mr. Mostyn was a progressive powerhouse who was heavily involved in politics throughout his career. He made his fortunes off of suing insurance companies after hurricanes ravaged his state, and used his wealth to fund numerous Democrat and progressive causes, including the Super PAC Ready for Hillary, which he and his wife CEO founded with Susie Tompkins Buell, a radical environmentalist and member of George Soros's Democracy Alliance. Mr. Mostyn's wife, Amber, was also a member of the Democracy Alliance and a close friend of former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, who was the keynote speaker at a 2010 Annie's List event honoring Amber. The Mostyns were close to the Clintons in general, having held numerous high-dollar fundraisers for Hillary's failed 2016 presidential run at their Houston home. Houston Chronicle in 2012 alone Mostyn donated $5.2 million to various pro-democratic super PACs ranging from Planned Parenthood to Texans for America's Future to Priorities USA Action, a pro-Barack Obama PAC, according to the Center for Public Integrity. In 2014, he and his wife donated approximately $3 million to Democratic candidates, including State Senator Wendy Davis, who we running against Republican Greg Abbott. Davis lost. I am heartbroken, Davis tweeted Thursday. Texas has lost an extraordinary person. Steve was a committed and effective fighter for justice, a wonderful husband, father, and friend. He leaves behind a lasting impact on everyone whose life he touched. Mostyn and his wife, Amber, were co-founders of the Ready for Hillary PAC, a political action committee supporting Clinton's unsuccessful campaign for president. At the same time, State campaign finance records show he also contributed to a police-affiliated PAC that supported Republican primary candidates. Mostyn also helped fund the Texas Organizing Project and Battleground Texas, two Democratic comeback strategies for the party that has not won a statewide election in two decades. It's hard to really quantify the hole it leaves for progressives. He's probably the first true financial benefactor for progressives in Houston and I say that because it's really different than supporting individual candidates the way trial lawyers have collectively in the past. He really supported the underlying causes, which is a different kind of take, and I'm not sure that gets filled, certainly not immediately. Despite the Mostens and the law firm's high-profile political activism they contributed more than $1.8 million to Texas politicians in 2016 Mostyn told the Texas Tribune in a September interview that he was growing tired of almost single-handedly funding Democratic candidates in a state that was solidly Republican. He said he intended to downscale his political giving to Democrats in Texas elections to encourage others to step forward. We've asked other people to do it and they want to do it and I want other people to get credit for doing it, the Tribune quoted him as saying. I mean this is a giant, giant state, if we were trying to flip Vermont we'd be done. However, their relationship came under stress in 2015, when Ethics Watchdog Group Foundation for Accountability and Civic Trust, FACT, filed a formal complaint against Hillary and her campaign for illegal coordination with the Ready for Hillary Super PAC, the Daily Caller reported. FACT has also asked the Senate Select Committee on Ethics to look into an April 21 meeting in which Clinton campaign aides attended a weekly meeting of Senate Democrats. FACT asserts that the meeting violates rule. This wasn't the first time the Clinton and Mostens found themselves being questioned over unethical practices. In 2010, 
Hillary Clinton's State Department pushed through a multi-billion dollar deal for Boeing in Russia, and just two months later the company gave nearly a million dollars to the Clinton Foundation. Just a short time later, Boeing's top lobbyist and former Bill Clinton aide Tim Keating partnered with Mr. Mostyn's Super PAC to do a joint fundraising venture for Hillary's planned presidential campaign. America's Freedom Fighters From Fox News when Hillary Clinton was America's top diplomat, she also appeared at times like a top salesperson for America's biggest airplane maker, Boeing. Traveling abroad on official business as Secretary of State, Clinton often visited Boeing facilities and made a pitch for the host country to buy Boeing jets. During one visit to Shanghai in May 2010, she boasted that more than half the commercial jetliners operating in China are made by Boeing. A sales plug in Russia in 2009, though, may have proved especially fruitful. While touring a Boeing plant, Secretary of State Clinton said, We're delighted that a new Russian airline, Rossiya, is actively considering acquisition of Boeing aircraft, and this is a shameless pitch. In 2010, Boeing landed the Russian deal, worth $3.7 billion. And two months later, the company donated $900,000 to the Clinton Foundation. This chain of events is raising new questions for Clinton, and Boeing, as the former Secretary of State launches her 2016 presidential campaign. The Boeing deal only adds to a growing list of business deals involving Clinton Foundation donors now coming under scrutiny. Boeing shareholder David Almazy recently confronted CEO James McNerney about the ethics of it. That opens the door to charges of honest services fraud, that there was a quid pro quo between the Clinton Foundation, the State Department, and Boeing, Almazy said. In prepared answers to questions posed to Boeing by Fox News, a spokesman defended the company's actions. Our contribution to the Clinton Foundation to help the people of Haiti rebuild was a transparent act of compassion and an investment aimed at aiding the long-term interests and hopes of the Haitian people, the spokesman said. The company also pointed out that it gave the American Red Cross $1.3 million after the devastating 2010 earthquake. Clinton defenders say there is no smoking gun. There's zero evidence that Hillary Clinton went to bet for Boeing for any reason other than to benefit the U.S. economy and U.S. workers, said former Clinton-slash-Gore adviser Richard Goldstein. But the financial connections don't end there. Boeing also paid former President Bill Clinton $250,000 for a speech in 2012. It was a speech that was approved by the State Department's Ethics Office which according to an Associated Press report often approved the ex-president's speaking engagements within days. Here is a list of mysterious deaths tied to the Clintons. One James McDougall Clinton's convicted Whitewater partner died of an apparent heart attack, while in solitary confinement. He was a key witness in Ken Starr's investigation. Two Mary Mahoney a former White House intern was murdered July 1997 at a Starbucks coffee shop in Georgetown. The murder happened just after she was to go public with her story of sexual harassment in the White House. Three Vince Foster former White House counselor, and colleague of Hillary Clinton at Little Rock's Rose Law Firm. Died of a gunshot wound to the head, ruled a suicide. Four Ron Brown Secretary of Commerce and former DNC chairman reported to have died by impact in a plane crash. A pathologist close to the investigation reported that there was a hole in the top of Brown's skull resembling a gunshot wound. At the time of his death Brown was being investigated, and spoke publicly of his willingness to cut a deal with prosecutors. 5C Victor Razor II and Montgomery Razor, major players in the Clinton fundraising organization died in a private plane crash in July 1992. 6. Paul Tully Democratic National Committee political director found dead in a hotel room in Little Rock, September 1992. Described by Clinton as a dear friend and trusted advisor. 7. Ed Willie Clinton fundraiser, found dead November 1993 deep in the woods in VA of a gunshot wound to the head. Ruled a suicide. Ed Willie died on the same day his wife Kathleen Willie claimed Bill Clinton groped her in the Oval Office in the White House. Ed Willie was involved in several Clinton fundraising events. 8. Jerry Parks Head of Clinton's gubernatorial security team in Little Rock. 
gunned down in his car at a deserted intersection outside Little Rock. Park's son said his father was building a dossier on Clinton. He allegedly threatened to reveal this information. After he died the files were mysteriously removed from his house. 9. James Bunch died from a gunshot suicide. It was reported that he had a black book of people which contained names of influential people who visited prostitutes in Texas and Arkansas. 10. James Wilson was found dead in May 1993 from an apparent hanging suicide. He was reported to have ties to Whitewater. 11. Kathy Ferguson, ex-wife of Arkansas trooper Danny Ferguson, was found dead in May 1994, in her living room with a gunshot to her head. It was ruled a suicide even though there were several packed suitcases, as if she were going somewhere. Danny Ferguson was a CO defendant along with Bill Clinton in the Paula Jones lawsuit. Kathy Ferguson was a possible corroborating witness for Paula Jones. 12. Bill Shelton Arkansas State Trooper and fiancé of Kathy Ferguson Critical of the suicide ruling of his fiancé, he was found dead in June, 1994 of a gunshot wound also ruled a suicide at the grave site of his fiancé. 13. Gandhi Bow attorney for Clinton's friend Dan Lassiter, died by jumping out a window of a tall building January, 1994. His client was a convicted drug distributor. 14. Florence Martin accountant and subcontractor for the CIA, was related to the Barry Seal Mina Airport drug smuggling case. He died of three gunshot wounds. 15. Suzanne Coleman reportedly had an affair with Clinton when he was Arkansas Attorney General. Died of a gunshot wound to the back of the head, ruled a suicide. Was pregnant at the time of her death. 16. Paula Grober Clinton's speech interpreter for the deaf from 1978 until her death December 9, 1992. She died in a one-car accident. 17. Danny Casolaro Investigative Reporter Investigating Mina Airport and Arkansas Development Finance Authority He slit his wrists, apparently, in the middle of his investigation. 18. Paul Wilcher Attorney Investigating Corruption at Mina Airport with Casolaro in the 1980 October Surprise was found dead on a toilet June 22, 1993 in his Washington, D.C. apartment had delivered a report to Janet Reno three weeks before his death. 19. John Parnell Walker Whitewater investigator for Resolution Trust Corp. jumped to his death from his Arlington, Virginia apartment balcony August 15, 1993. He was investigating the Morgan Guarantee scandal. 20. Barbara Wise Commerce Department staffer Worked closely with Ron Brown and John Huang. Cause of death unknown Died November 29, 1996. Her bruised, nude body was found locked in her office at the Department of Commerce. 21 Charles Meissner Assistant Secretary of Commerce who gave John Huang special security clearance, died shortly thereafter in a small plane crash. 22 Dr. Stanley Heard Chairman of the National Chiropractic Healthcare Advisory Committee, died with his attorney Steve Dixon in a small plane crash. Dr. Heard in addition to serving on Clinton's advisory council personally treated Clinton's mother, stepfather, and brother. 23 Barry Seal drug running pilot out of Mena, Arkansas, death was no accident. 24 Johnny Lawhorn Jr. mechanic, found a check made out to Bill Clinton in the trunk of a car left at his repair shop. He was found dead after his car had hit a utility pole. 25 Stanley Huggins investigated Madison Guarantee. His death was a purported suicide and his report was never released. 26 Herschel Friday attorney and Clinton fundraiser died March 1, 1994 when his plane exploded. 27 Kevin Ives and Don Henry known as the boys on the track case. Reports say the boys may have stumbled upon the Mena Arkansas Airport drug operation. A controversial case, the initial report of death said, due to falling asleep on railroad tracks. Later reports claim the two boys had been slain before being placed on the tracks. Many linked to the case died before their testimony could come before a grand jury. The following persons had information on the Ives-Henry case. 28 Keith Coney died when his motorcycle slammed into the back of a truck, July 1988. 29 Keith McMaskley died stabbed 113 times, 
November 1988. 30 Gregory Collins died from a gunshot wound January 1989. 31 Jeff Rhodes he was shot, mutilated and found burned in a trash dump in April 1989. 33 James Milan found decapitated. However, the coroner ruled his death was due to natural causes. 34 Jordan Kettleson was found shot to death in the front seat of his pickup truck in June 1990. 35 Richard Winters a suspect in the Ives Henry deaths. He was killed in a set up robbery July 1989. The following Clinton bodyguards are dead, 36 Major William S. Barkley Jr. 37 Captain Scott J. Reynolds 38 Sergeant Brian Hanley 39 Sergeant Tim Sabell 40 Major General William Robertson 41 Colonel William Densberger 42 Colonel Robert Kelly 43 Spec Gary Rhodes 44 Steve Willis 45 Robert Williams 46 Conway Leblu 47 Todd McKeehan 48 World-renowned space economist Molly McCauley was brutally murdered in Baltimore Park. 49 John Ash the former president of the UN General Assembly was awaiting trial on bribery charges when he turned up dead in June, apparently having crushed his own windpipe while lifting weights in his home. 50 Victor Thorne prominent Clinton critic Victor Thorne found dead of apparent suicide on his birthday. 51 Seth Rich still no clues in murder of DNC Seth Rich as conspiracy theories thicken. 52 Joe Montano Filipino-American activist and aide to Senator Kane, dies at 47. 53 Sean Lucas death of DNC lawsuit processor Sean Lucas adds to Seth Rich conspiracy theories. 54 Seth Rich family's private investigator, there is evidence Seth Rich had contact with WikiLeaks prior to death. 55 Klaus Eberwein found dead before testifying against Clinton Foundation in Haiti cover-up. 56 Man who sought Clinton's emails from Russian hackers committed suicide. Does anyone in the media wonder why everyone around the Clintons seems to commit suicide, disappear or dies under mysterious circumstances? The Clintons are either the luckiest people in the world, or they are guilty of taking down an awful lot of people who could either rat them out or take them down.